Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it there. Monday. We had uh, the Polar Vortex streaming right down to us, and I don't mean just in Wood Buffalo, all across Alberta, most of Western Canada, and we're still locked into it, but it is easing, getting just a little bit better. Have you noticed, I'm sure you have, how we are extremely ready to cancel plans when it's extremely cold? <laughs> Because we certainly are. Uh, we had plans to go out for a friend's, uh, you know, dinner uh, at, a, at a house birthday kind of celebration. Bunch of groups of people Saturday nights, and you know that alert came out, and we're thinking, oh, you know, well that works because instead of like five different ovens being on, it's just one. Instead of five different places where all the lights are on, it's just one where we got some lights on. It's kind of fun in that way, but still extremely cold. Uh, we almost didn't make it. I will admit it was touch and go because. Any little excuse not to do something in the extreme cold becomes a big excuse. Well, the car started, but did you hear the sound it made when it turned over? Better not drive around and actually warm up the engine bay, you know. I'm sorry, the neighbors are making noise that is barely audible in my place. I better stick around in case they need something. Ah, jeez, you know, there's this online quiz I've been meaning to do, so, you know, I've got some leftover milk uh, right after eating my cereal, and it, it, you know, it made my tummy feel a little funny when I drank it, so you know, I just can't come. I'm sorry. Maybe next time, when it's 20 degrees warmer than it is. Warming the hearts of fans of Ryan Gosling was the win that he saw at the Critics' Choice Awards for Best Song. And that would be for the one that he uh, sang at in the Barbie uh, soundtrack. I'm Just Ken. Also, a Christmas version came out in December for it as well, which really wasn't very Christmassy. Just they added Merry Christmas Barbie to the end of it. Anyway, uh, they won, and the video of Ryan Gosling's reaction has now become a meme. He's completely bewildered and confused by the situation, but honestly, very much deserving. Um, and in rock news, you've got Scott Stapp saying maybe there might be a new Creed coming. He was on uh, the Trunk Nation show this past week saying uh, he was talking to the guitarist from the band. They were maybe working on something they can't talk about, but also they were discussing how they wrote their 1999 album Human Clay while touring on the road and just not having enough songs to justify being headliners in their own mind. They didn't want to do a, a ton of covers, so during sound checks, 80 or 90% of that album was written while on the road and just trying to make the sound right so that they had enough songs to play when the audience was actually there. You're listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast, Podcast. from 100.5 Cruise FM. There are people that are fighting for drink cups on the internet, some listings, uh, I take them with a grain of salt, I don't know how true they are, showing pink versions of the Stanley Cup, the so-called Stanley Cup on the internet, uh, for like $15,000. Yeah, don't do that. There are some better options. Uh, now, the thing is, this is a confusing thing to my brain because I had just really heard it or read it a couple times on the internet, and my brain just locked it in as like, yeah, Stanley Cup, yeah, people want that, totally. But that was as far as my brain calculated. Turns out that's not the case. Stanley the brand and their drinkware, um, I mean, they've been around for, I think, like a century. This is not like a new brand or anything like that, but why has it exploded in popularity? Uh, good marketing, manufactured scarcity, pink being super hot this year because of Barbie. It all is just kind of like a, 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 a trifecta spinning around making people want to get their hands on these things. Genuinely, people are fighting harder for the Stanley Cups than NHL teams do. Tuesday. It is fun to think about all the little things that you could buy with your climate action incentive rebates, you know, as a treat. That showed up in my, my, my uh, bank account and went, hang on, wait, wait, where'd this come from? Oh, right. Um, you know, you could use it for dinner or a date night, night out on the town, crush the hotel cost of a little mini getaway, uh... Put a deposit down on a new tattoo, maybe? Feeling crazy with it? But then the veil of imagination lifts, and then you realize it's probably going to one of two places. Groceries, or this year's taxes. If it even lasts that long. I mean, you know, if it hasn't just disappeared into the day-to-day -day cost abyss already. New car battery, so you can just make it to work? <laughs> that was the sound of your wallet. 
Elton John winning the uh, e- Emmy, uh, completing the EGOT status, getting all four, and saying he is comp- incredibly humbled uh, at the Primetime Emmy Awards. He got a, uh, a nod for his farewell from Dodger Stadium show, and uh, the 75th Emmy Awards locked it in for him becoming the 19th person ever to get EGOT status. Meanwhile, in future award shows for the year, because we're not done yet, the first three artists have been named as performers for the 2024 Grammys. They're also all up for awards that night, but all female pop stars, uh, talking about Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa, and Olivia Rodrigo. More to come as well, the nominations later on this month. And Madonna having to apologize, a little flub while she was in a concert uh, at t- Toronto. However, saying, Are you ready, Boston? Which, of course, elicits a groan from the audience. Hey, it's okay. Don't worry. When artists get to be a certain age, you just be happy that they're performing at all. You don't need them to know where they are. Are you ready to go camping yet? Are you ready? You better get ready. If you weren't aware, Parks Canada, uh, the National Parks bookings, are going to be going on uh, very quickly. They're going to be live in days from now. You better get ready to commit because there are two months ahead of the usual schedule. At least last year, they began in March. However, this year, they begin on January 19th, and they'll be open through February 13th. I'm not even, like, thinking about camping by the time we hit February. It's still chilly, you know? It's just starting to warm up, and you're starting to feel like, oh, there's freedom in being outside again. The leaves are going to be green in a several, several weeks. No. This year, not so much. Uh, you better be able to figure out those plans, because you know there's going to be a, the usual run on the best spots and the most popular weekends. But look it up. They announced it in November, in case you missed the details, but January 19th to February 13th is when you can book those Parks Canada campsites this year. Wednesday. Tablet clamps on a gooseneck arm that vices onto the headboard at your bed. What a miracle product. I mean, as long as you get one that's like decently constructed. What a miracle. Um, I just got my hands on one of these yesterday because I've been having some insomnia and uh, you know, I think, you know, the lack of sunlight and the weird, you know, amount of darkness we get. It's a problem. It's part of it. But, uh, you know, I don't get enough sleep on a good night anyways. How familiar does that sound? Willing to give anything a shot. I tried it last night. My partner was lying there beside me going, Oh my god, and laughing. As I was, I mean, literally wrestling with the arm. Trying to get it into a good position for, you know, viewing that wouldn't end with me clotheslining myself as I got out of bed in the morning. It was a concern of mine. (laughs) Bleary, I didn't want to do that. I'd be so confused. I'd be fighting with the thing. But I got the last laugh, though, because it worked. Holy cow. A couple of minutes after hitting play on something I didn't care about watching, and I was out. I love this thing. It's my favorite new thing in the house. Let me know. We're asking the big question this morning. What is a life hack gadget you've tried that actually works? Let me know. Starting off with a big reunion that's going to be coming for the Coachella Festival, at least in the springtime. Many fans also with hopes that it might lead to a full tour, but no doubt will be reuniting. Gwen Stefani, Tom Dumont, Tony Canal, and Adrian Young all going to be together again in April. But that's not the only reunion that's going to be happening. People also noticed Sublime on the list of acts that were on the poster shared just yesterday. Of course, uh, Rome decided not to be part of the band anymore. The uh, most recent frontman uh, decided to part ways. However, Sublime is going to be performing as a full reunion, except just Bradley Noel not going to be there. He's not with us anymore. His son Jacob will be filling the role. And the Smashing Pumpkins, after recently posting a worldwide, all-inclusive, anybody-can-apply encouragement to, you know, become their new guitarist, send in your resume and your specs, Uh, they say that they've received over 10,000 applications, and they have a full-time team looking to genuinely review every single one. 
Did you send one in? Hey, Alexa, play the Steve Reeve podcast. I'm not even somebody who's at home and still sleeping early in the morning who could be annoyed by this, but on behalf of everybody who is, we got to talk. You may now, like now, begin snow blowing. All right? Not before then. Now is when it starts. If you're anywhere near residential buildings, please stop cranking the noisy snowblowers on any time before 9 a.m., really. And I mean, sure, you could stretch that a bit, but the amount of rage that you're generating increases exponentially with how early that thing is in use, all right? You are just ruining days before they even start. Same deal in the summer with the lawn mowing and the weed whacking while we're at it. Just cut that crap out. Start a little later. Or, you might have to break your back with the shovel if you can. I'm just saying, we're annoyed. Thursday. Red flags in movies. When you're watching something new, the trailers can be a big indicator. You always hate when you see the whole movie in the trailer, but sometimes there are multiple trailers for the same movie, and when you see them almost identical to each other, especially with the same joke, and it's not even a good joke, not great. Or when a scene has really instantly recognizable music, Licensed music, but it doesn't fit the scene at all? That's super awkward. When people don't speak like people in general, when the opening narration is pretty obvious, and mine, mine for sure. While not really a red flag because sometimes it happens a little later in the movie, I always hate it. The one that gets me is when you get a flashback to something that happened earlier, but it's set up as part of a big reveal, and they clearly don't think that we can remember what happened 32 minutes ago. <gasps> Flash to white! Do you remember? We remember, do you? Or, or they don't have confidence that was interesting enough to remember, and sometimes that is the case. We've got Bush in the news again. Gavin Rossdale and friends, uh, they were just on Jimmy Fallon's show to promote the fact that they've got a new tour. Uh, Loaded, the greatest hits North American tour, going to be happening this summer. And uh, they were playing some favorites, like Glycerin. Uh, it's just uh, wild to see them in the news again. Uh, it's you know, just been a while, but they're coming back to the fore. Meanwhile, Sum 41 is going to be leaving the spotlight as they are just announcing the final details of their final tour, which will of course include their last show ever, Asterix, until they decide to do another one down the line. You know how this works. And Anthony Kiedis is going to be the subject of a biopic, not exactly directly about uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, but about the frontman specifically, as Universal Pictures has got the rights to the 2005 memoir Scar Tissue, a fascinating read, but if you have read it, you know some of these things are going to be interesting to translate onto film. No question, or sorry, no word as to when this is going to arrive, lots of things to develop, including picking who's going to be playing Kiedis in the movie. My guess is, might actually be Anthony Kiedis. Friday. First thing in the morning, sometimes it's the caffeine need that is first to be met in the day. Then, you know, you figure out the water, the food, the air. Um, but caffeine, chief amongst them. And I happen to have spotted on our local buy and sell marketplaces online one of the most hilarious uh, posts. It's a, a full on espresso mixing machine with all the accoutrement kind of thing like a you know a countertop make yourself some fancy coffee this time kind of thing and uh posted with the caption turns out i have no interest being a barista leave that to the starbucks folks so never used counter ornament this is a really fine looking piece of equipment the price asking i did not look up the retail or anything like that but i have to imagine it's not far off Asking price of a cool thousand dollars, that's all. Uh, I don't know. My coffee seems cheaper when I buy it somewhere else than a thousand dollars, but still, um, I find that so hilarious. So to the poster of that, the current or maybe soon to be previous owner of this machine, this caffeinating machine, um, hey, you tried. You tried your best, and you know where to get your caffeine easier now. The Oilers uh, pulling off a rarity in hockey. Uh, they were fighting against the Seattle Kraken last night, won it 4-2. to two, But the win itself wasn't the thing. It was the fact that it was the 12th straight win from the Oilers. Let me break that down just how rare this is, actually. In the history of the league, only 64 teams, or at least 64 win streaks of 10 games or more, have been hit. That mark has only been hit 64 times by teams in the NHL. The Oilers, with 12, jump into fewer than 20 teams have ever made it there. 
the Oilers becoming the 19th team in league history to reach the milestone. The longest streak ever, 17. So they're not even that far off. That was in 1992-1993, the Pittsburgh Penguins. 16 games in the 2016-17 to Columbus Blue Jackets. You got that one. That's the most recent streak of that length. And in fact, that's also the year that the last 12 streak was seen, 2016-2017. to So this is not something that happens every day. And the Oilers can absolutely celebrate it. How are we going to celebrate it? How are we going to cheer on the team with their dozen and maybe more? That's obvious. We're going streaking through the quad and into the gymnasium. Come on, everybody. Come on. I was just talking about the newly announced performers that are going to be associated with the Super Bowl on February 11th, saying that Post Malone will be on the halftime show. No, no, he actually was announced in the same breath with Reba, who's going to be doing the uh, the uh, national anthem. Post Malone singing America the Beautiful Usher at the halftime show. There we go. Got my, my, my ducks in a row. Fans are suing Madonna in other news because of delayed concert times. The chief argument, they had to get up early to go to work. There's a group of men at uh, December Concerts, New York City's Barclays Center. They say that it was over two hours later than scheduled, and so they want their comeuppance. They want their money. Concerts starting at 10.30 instead of 8.30. They got things to do the next day. That yeah, kind of understandable, but I have been in concerts waiting more than two hours, more like three or four hours for headliners, and eh, kind of part of it. You're not happy. But then they start playing music and you just jam out. Um, And finally, uh, the Kurt Cobain opera, Last Days, uh, the one that was inspired by him, or more directly based on the film Last Days by Gus Van Sant from 2005. It was originally playing in the London Royal Opera House in 2022. Now it's going to have its U.S. premiere February 6th at the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. Definitely subject matter to associate with Walt Disney. Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. I have just learned about Veganuary. I can, I can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, Baltimore just became the first U.S. city to declare January Veganuary Month. Turns out, I've learned this morning, there is an organization operating since 2014 promoting Veganuary in a push to lower dependency on factory farm products and improve the quality of life for animals, including livestock. Not bad things at all. Not bad things at all. And uh, happy 10-year anniversary to the organization. I have... I genuinely, I respect people who eat vegan. Uh, or even eat some vegan to, like, offset the meat intake instead of cold turkey. Or, I guess it would be cold no turkey. Uh, regardless, vegan food can be amazing. And animals cultivated in cruel conditions is the opposite of amazing. Let's agree on that. And uh, you know, at home, we just made Spanish rice last night. Enough to last, like, a week, it feels like. And it only gets tastier with time. You can't tell me that nothing vegan tastes good. This is not the truth. No issue with the concept of vegan. But I am not going to be able to take anybody who uses the term veganuary in earnest seriously. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. This is really cool. This is a bit of a reunion uh, for me. Megan Schott here joining me, local aspiring up-and-coming filmmaker. How are you doing? Hi. It's so (laughs) nice to see you. Yeah, it's been a minute. Just for those who aren't aware, we've worked together just a little bit before. I work with a a production company in town called MacGuffin Media. We put together one of the Buffies during the pandemic years that wasn't a live event and a bunch of other stuff. Your your work, your your initial film work has been seen at the Buffies by anybody who's attended or or been there. That's exciting. Yeah. You got things on the go. Yeah, so my girl was part of Connection to Land video series for the Buffy Awards in 2022. Yeah. That was a short film that was created created for the Buffy Awards. And then I sent it over to a few film festivals. It got into Maryland in New Zealand. Yeah. So I took my mom. We traveled last year. Oh, so you went. Oh, that's I so went, cool. I yeah. Um, really opened my mind up into what indigenous filmmaking can be and yeah. the stories we can share. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I went to Northern Ontario um, for a film festival. So that's all we have for the circuit. Yeah. Well, hey, that's uh, huge. Yes. For like a first running out and, and you're so you're so young as a filmmaker coming into the industry and, and, and trying to make a name. That's so cool. But I know that you're bu- you've are you been busy lately as well. And we're going to get into that in just a sec. Mm-hmm. But um, as not just creators, uh, people who make films love to watch films, like love to absorb and stuff. And I've, I've been seeing that it, there's been like, some really cool moments for indigenous filmmakers mm-hmm. lately. Okay. Um, I mean, the movie Prey, a couple years old now, but like all filmed in Alberta. Yes. So many Albert and talent in there so many Albertan actors and it's still 
getting awards, like still getting nominated yeah. for awards. Yeah, and then I think for Prey, they also had a lot of Indigenous crew members yeah. as well. Oh, huge, huge amounts, and just a real, really cool showing that is, you can try something different in movies, and and people will react. Um, most recently, I haven't finished it, so don't no spoilers if you have watched it. But Echo, the Marvel Ooh, show, I just watched that the other day. Unreal, and some like uh, for McMurray, you know, Wood Buffalo talent in there, uh, Tantu Cardinal, yeah, uh, Cody Lightning from Edmonton, yeah, and so many. One of my favorite movies growing up was Smoke Signals. They're both really? in that, so it's like a reunion. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was <laughs> amazing. Yeah, uh, Cody actually, so Cody just did a mockumentary. I don't think it's out yet. It's called Hey Victor. Oh yeah, um, okay. So basically, it's the character, his character from Smoke Signals, and he's trying to make Smoke Signals 2. <laughs> okay. And it's he's like office to get a style. It's so good. It's so funny. That sounds amazing. I watched it. They had a, they had a, <laughs> they had a screening in Edmonton at the Metro for Family and Friends, and Eric, my business partner, right, um, <clears throat> uh, was part of that. Stick around with me for just one second. We'll talk a little bit more, Megan. Um, Eric Janvier from our town. Got some things on the go, and I want to know all about it. With me right now, Megan Schott, a local filmmaker up and coming uh, who is working on a project with a guy who's also from the region who's making his very first feature-length film, a comedy, coming-of-age story. Um, and Megan Schott joining me, Eric Janvier, the director behind the project, and uh, this is something that's absolutely homegrown. Inspired by his his time in a video store in Fort McMurray, which yes. is so cool back in the 90s What can you tell us about this? Project? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so um, Eric and I so I'm born and raised in Fort McMurray Yeah, um, as well. He had this idea He had a script he was sitting on for a while and then he had mentioned he needed a producer Yeah, and I've never done it before <laughs> but I was like hey, I, I'm game. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's try it out um, So we sent in an application did a little pitch video to telefilm um, for their talent to watch program So we waited all summer I tried to figure it out and then we found out in the fall that we got fully funded yes so we are making a movie it's called last stop video rentals um, it's a coming of age workplace comedy and it takes place in 1999 um, we have so much for McMurray talent coming in as well yeah uh, some people who were born and raised here is really important to kind of support local people um, we have Andrew Hunter I don't know if you know him yeah, the name rings a bell for yeah. sure yes yeah um, and then Alyssa Mackley she's been in Vancouver for the last little bit I think she's worked on Riverdale okay yeah so we bring all these people so yeah we're making a movie <laughs> feature length his first film my my first film that's huge news honestly yeah. I hope it goes incredibly well you're gonna have the best time making it of course but I hope that that's even better of a time when it comes out and again people get to see it and the, and the reception of course we're talking so far in the future now and i know that it's stuff that you probably have no idea about but i'm just hoping i'm putting it out there into the ether that there's uh like a fort mcmurray screening big premiere here oh absolutely homecoming. i yeah. would love that mm -hmm. i'm um, sure that eric would be into it as well yeah. yeah i think the big goal right now would be like to pr premiere at tiff which is so wild to say <laughs> right <laughs> like steve taylor swift was at was at tiff a couple yeah. years ago Man. tiff is a big deal yeah. Tiff is no, is no joke yeah, yeah. So hopefully you know like we've had a distributor reach out to us uh, okay uh, yeah 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 crazy things are happening people are really stoked and i think it's because one the video rental store that we're filming at is actually standing still yeah it's in stony plain shout out to joe from movie world they're they're rare they're like pay phones these days yeah yeah and funny thing we we need to we need to find a pay phone yeah uh, so we found one of those like it's so funny like we're trying to find like an 80s beat up car right yeah yeah and honestly that sounds like easier to find than a pay phone yeah. the only one that i'm aware of in our region is at the airport in fort chip <laughs> <laughs> and i don't even know if it's still there it's been a couple years since i've been so exciting yes yeah, so we have this future film coming out um right now we're in pre-production yeah so we actually go to camera february 25th really quick yeah a month away yeah well um i won't say the uh the the l word i'll just say break a leg break all those legs and have the best time while you're filming it keep in touch with us as it's going through the process okay yeah cool thanks megan shot up and comer from our region making films you're going to want to keep that name in, on your mind and shout out to eric janvier as well i, I want to be a part of this thing yeah you know what you know what steve i have this idea Okay. You okay. Have, you have you have a really good voice. <laughs> yeah, I, I I try. And you're very for McMurray. <laughs> Born so I think, raised. Yeah. So I think I, I'd like to have you on as like our trailer voice. I've always wanted to be like an actual trailer voice guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah always. I'm in. I'm officially. Totally in. Officially. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Megan. Transmission over. One more Steve. New podcast episodes happen every Friday, or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show weekday mornings starting at 5:30 a.m. on 100.5 Cruise FM.